Well, good morning, Professor Kent Lee here. Welcome back to Intermediate Writing or Intermediate Composition. Well, it's maybe morning if you're watching this video or if it's not morning for you, it's morning somewhere in the world, maybe in Russia or Germany or England or Canada or middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's morning somewhere. So anyway, uh, if I seem a little tired, I'm, I'm okay. I just had my second uh, coronavirus vaccination, and I had a big lunch. So, okay. I'm okay, though. Don't worry. All right. Today, we're going to talk about uh, your next assignment. This might be a bit of a surprise. Uh, I'm making some minor adjustments to the syllabus. Last year, when I taught this course, I kind of hurriedly threw it all together because I was kind of a new professor here, and, and I um, um, hadn't really developed... Uh, hadn't been developing intermediate writing materials. Um, now I am um, trying to develop this course so that it's more suitable for English majors, especially for many of you who are going to go on to work in companies. Uh, a few of you might become school teachers, and this assignment will be relevant to you too. A few of you might go on for PhD studies or something like that, a uh, purely academic track. Uh, even then, you still need to work and put, you know, food on the table, and get money to pay for your school tuition and all that. You have to work. Uh, so I'm oh, this year and next year, I'm going to be um, adding more kind of practical contents for most of you since I think most students in this department have to take this class, either from me or from um, somebody else who's not as mean as a teacher. Anyway, so I have added this assignment called Job Application Questions. Um, and I used to include kind of job cover letters in my advanced writing class, and I'm going to bring more of that content over into this course. Uh, for now, we're doing uh, more essay-style questions. Uh, I might have you turn this into a cover letter a bit later as another assignment, perhaps. Uh, so... Some companies, when you apply for jobs, have you um, just answer questions. They have some standard questions for you to answer, and you answer them in what's called a, a short essay, a short essay question, which is really like a, a full paragraph, or it could be two paragraphs or, or so, or more. So each of these questions you're going to answer in at least one full paragraph. You can do two, maybe three paragraphs if you want to, if you are inspired to do so. Um, now, uh, some companies, especially American companies, will instead prefer that you write up a cover letter instead of answering uh, pre-assigned uh, job essay questions. They'll just ask you to submit a cover letter and a resume. So I might ask you to uh, do a cover letter later on. So a cover letter is more like a one-page business letter where you um, basically express your interest in the job and in prose, in paragraphs, you explain why you want the job and why, you, you know, your qualifications and why you'd be a good person. Uh, so in this assignment, though, we're going to do essay questions where the company gives you a certain number of essay questions to answer. Uh, so for this essay questions, you'll fill out these application questions as if you're applying for a job. I'm going to let you choose um, the job that you're applying for. Um, so you can adapt this to your purposes because you might actually someday apply for a company job or um, a school teaching job or something. So uh, you get to choose that. It could be a real company. It could be a fictional company or school as long as it's realistic. You know, don't apply for a Hogwarts or don't say you want to be a teacher at Hogwarts. I'm going to throw that out. Uh, or Starfleet Academy, which of course is a fictional school in the far future. You can write this as if you're applying for a job uh, to some kind of a realistic sounding company, entity, organization. It could be an entry level position at a major company. Uh, it could be uh, an, a domestic company in your country. Uh, some of many of you, most of you are in my class are Korean students. Some of you are foreign students from other countries. Okay, you can pick a company uh, from your country. Uh, an entry level 
or kind of be, that's a kind of a beginning position, a starter position uh, uh, at a major company, domestic or international company, uh, or other kinds of junior positions, uh, a teaching job, primary school, secondary school, tertiary, that'd be college, uh, uh, private Hagwon school or something like that, some kind of an NGO or charity organization. A government agency or a governmental organization, you know, United Nations, UNESCO, UNICEF, uh, World Health Organization, uh, something like that. Uh, you can project yourself into the future, uh, so you can pretend that you're a senior. Uh, you can uh, you can pretend that you've you know taken you know all these courses and you've got these accomplishments as long as what you say is reasonable. If you're, 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 if you're describing yourself as a senior in the future, pretending to be a senior, a fourth year student in the future, uh, what you say about your accomplishments should be reasonable. Uh, of course, don't, don't say that you got a Nobel Prize or anything like that, anything crazy like that. Uh, before you answer the questions, and you, okay, you should follow the the document format that's in like the first page of the appendix of my book, kind of basic uh, document for, format layout. Um, and and before you start answering the questions, maybe in one sentence, just tell me um, specifically what kind of job you're applying for. Like I'm applying for an entry level position at LG Electronics, or I'm applying for an entry level position at you know this particular bank. It could be a fictional bank uh, or a real one, a teaching job at this school or this kind of school. Uh, like, could be just a high school in Busan. Uh, that's fine. Uh, uh, beginning entry level position in NGO, government agency, or something like that. A junior position at a government agency. Um, so, pick. Um, you're going to answer four questions. So, number one. Please explain your relevant training, education, skills, qualification for working with this company or organization, entity, institution, and for working in this specific position. I'll say more about that later. Number two, pick one of these. Have you, how have you developed intellectually, personally, while in college, or how have you developed yourself or expressed your developed or expressed your leadership, leadership abilities, leadership skills? both in school and out of school. And number three, what are your long-term long -term goals with this company or organization and your career? And number four, uh, pick one of these. You've got several options for number four. What book has changed you the most? Explain a past experience in your life that has changed you. Uh, if you could change the curriculum in your school, like where you, where you are studying right now, in college, this is your college program, uh, what, change, what changes would you make? Uh, number or the last one, uh, explain the relevance of your major, like you're an English major, okay, how is that relevant for this job, for society? And that kind of goes along with, somewhat might overlap with the, the first question, depending on how you answer it. Uh, so some of these are going to involve process paragraphs, you're talking kind of process narrative paragraphs, you're talking about maybe how you change, how you grew, how you developed. Uh, or your your future goals. That's sort of like a future process that you're kind of hypothetically describing, uh, sort of a process. Uh, so this brings together some of the different paragraph forms you've learned that we've kind of talked about in this class and in your previous writing classes, narrative, descriptive, process, paragraphs, uh, as well as kind of classifying paragraphs as we'll see in a minute. So. Uh, let's talk about your skills and abilities. Um, brainstorm, kind of come up with like a list, an outline of your various skills and abilities, uh, especially for number one. Um, so brainstorm, use some of the brainstorming methods we've talked about, uh, methods for organizing and uh, coming up with ideas and organizing ideas and create an outline maybe to kind of prioritize them, create a kind of a priority, which ones are more important, especially for a particular job. So you're going to focus on hard skills, first of all. So hard skills, those are things that you have specific training for. Um, if you do a training program and you get a certificate that says, okay, uh, you're 
you know how to use this computer programming language, your Python programmer, the Python programming language. Okay, that's a certificate, that's a hard skill. Uh, something you have a piece of paper that says, this is a specific skill I was trained in. Your college degree, so most of you are English majors in my class. So yeah, obviously English. Um, specifically, uh, what are your reading, writing skills, listening skills, speaking skills? Uh, specific language ability skills. Maybe you've studied other languages. Uh, what are your other language skills? Maybe you've taken classes or a second major or different or a minor in something else. Okay, what are your hard skills there? What are you specifically trained in? What are your specific skills that correlate with your college degree or particular classes you've had in college? Uh, it could be like linguistic analysis, uh, could be something else if you've taken business classes particular business skills you've learned in your business classes, for example. That's a start. Next, you need to do what we call soft skills or transferable skills. And these are skills that maybe you're not so aware of that you've gotten um, as a result of your college years, your college experiences, and maybe other experiences as well. Maybe travel experiences, living abroad, um, other study experiences, um, school clubs, uh, experiences with school clubs, doing volunteer work in the community, things like that. Uh, so think of specific transferals, transferable skills besides, you know, what's on your, your college certificates, your college records. Communication skills. So besides just learning English and maybe other languages, it's not just the language skills, the ability to like read and write and speak English, but it's like communication skills. Okay, how are your different English communication skills, different kinds of communication situations or uh, communication tasks? Uh, what, are your, what are your particular communication skills like? Uh, besides communication, especially as an English major or from maybe uh, experience in other countries with other cultures, Cross-cultural skills, cross-cultural ability, cross-cultural sensitivity, cross-cultural awareness, cross-cultural intelligence. Especially if you're applying for an international company, these are important skills to think of. Okay, identify specific cross-cultural skills, ability to communicate, to understand uh, other specific cultures in cultural context. Uh, maybe to, you know, tell other, um, you know, to, you know, go on a business trip and go to another country and represent your company uh, in that language and dealing with a new culture. Maybe it's a culture you're familiar with or just the adaptability to handle new cultures. Maybe you're, you're being sent to Thailand for the first time to help with your company doing some business in Thailand. Okay, maybe it's a culture you don't know. Uh, but if you've had enough other cross-cultural experience, you can say, okay, I'm good at learning uh, and adapting to new cultures and learning about them beforehand. and and I have the, the cultural sensitivity uh, as an English major. And that comes from, uh, you know, studying English as a foreign language, uh, learning about other cultures through your English studies, your literature classes, and through uh, other things you've learned in college or other experiences you've had uh, uh, as an adult. Emotional awareness, emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence skills, your self-awareness, awareness of other people. Again, that can come from um, your exposure to other cultures and interacting with other cultures, and even from you know studying literature and learning how other people think and feel in different social and cultural contexts. That's something you can get from literature, you know, if you think about it. Um, social skills. Uh, in addition to your language skills, communication skills, maybe social skills. Analytical skills, maybe from the different things you've done in college, whether it's uh, analyzing business case studies in a business class, analyzing literature in a literature class, analyzing language in a linguistics course, uh, you've developed different analytical skills. Okay, think about your analytical, analytical skills. What kind of things can you analyze? How might that transfer to something else? Uh, yeah, you can analyze, analyze literature. What, well, now you're working for a company and you have to deal with maybe um, written requests from uh, maybe uh, a, a potential client in another company. And maybe you're the sort of person who is better able to understand what they're trying to say, uh, what they mean, uh, analyzing different situations. Um, your analytical skills can be applied 
potentially to different situations uh, because what you learn in maybe analyzing English literature or in you know math proofs can potentially help you to think uh, in other situations as well like in company situations um, think of ways that, that could transfer to other situations cognitive flexibility uh, especially if you're a language major and you're dealing with different cultures hopefully that develops your cognitive flexibility you're more able to adapt to different cultures but also adapt to new situations like a new job situation you're maybe a, put into a new job environment that's new to you uh, uh, and then later you're sent to another office or you're sent to work in your company's branch office in another country uh, along with the cultural adaptability cognitive flexibility uh, being intellectually flexible, um, being able to handle new situations, and being able to analyze them and understand them without, you know, feeling stressed out and overly anxious. Along with that openness to new experience, um, especially as a language major, for example, hopefully that's given you more openness to new experience uh, and a desire to learn new and other things, maybe outside of your comfort zone, outside of what you know. And what, what, what is, what's evidence of that? You know, in, in my case, I can say, oh, I like to learn different foreign languages when I, whenever I have a chance and different cultures. And I like to learn new things. I, I like to, whenever I get a chance, I like to learn about something new, like on U educational videos on YouTube, whether it's philosophy or uh, history or science and science news or, or, or math or, or physical training and exercise. So those are different things I look at on YouTube, for example, a wide range of stuff. Leadership skills. What leadership skills have you develop, developed, especially from maybe being active in school clubs, campus organizations, volunteer work in the community, service work. Uh, so if you haven't done it yet, now is the time to get involved in different school clubs, at least one. Don't try to get too involved in too many, but pick one, maybe two. Get involved and get involved in, you know, into in the leadership, some kind of a leadership role. Um, develop social skills there, leadership skills, uh, or volunteer work in the community where you, you work with people and you, you do something and you can grow socially and intellectually and mentally like that. And that's something you can put on your resume. Think about specific soft skills that you have and hard skills that you have and then specific job tasks if you're applying for uh, an entry-level position in the personnel office, office that manages like employees at a big company. Okay, what specific hard skills like language uh, and communication skills do you have and what specific soft skills do you have that would be relevant to that position? Or if you're applying for a job as a teacher or if you're applying for uh, a starter job in a government agency in an office. What are your specific skills? List them all and then kind of classify them, categorize them in terms of what's more relevant to a particular job or think of specific job tasks, things you'll have to do. Maybe it's negotiating with foreign clients, uh, going and giving presentations on behalf of your company to potential clients in your country or in another country, you know, trying to sell them, present, do presentations about your company and get them to, uh, you know, buy a service from your company or something like that. What are specific job tasks that you would envision yourself doing and how would your skills be relevant to that? So brainstorm your different possible soft skills and hard skills, organize them, outline them, prioritize them in terms of what's maybe more most relevant to a particular job and the tasks, the things you do at that job in that position. And some tips, focus more on post high school experience. Um, so if you're applying for an, an American company and you're writing like a, a cover letter and a resume, you would not include high school information because one that looks like, oh, you haven't done anything since high school. Um, so for American companies, they only care what you did starting from when you started college in terms of your resume, your job experience and what you put in your cover letter. Uh, or likewise, if you're writing essay questions like this, again, an American company would not be interested in what you did in high school. So for a Korean company or a company in another country, um, 
they may are probably more open to hearing about your high school experiences and answering you know one of these questions don't focus on that too much though uh, if it's high school keep it fairly concise um, and focus on maybe or if it's like a high school experience okay don't describe it in too much detail but focus more on okay now what kind of person are you now as a result of that focus on the now and how you've grown from that uh, and try to also focus more on college experiences, experiences during and outside of college um, since the time you graduated high school. Uh, could be also foreign travel experiences, experiences living abroad, studying abroad, things like that. Um, for a lot of these are kind of process paragraphs, talking about past experiences and how they changed you or what you plan to do in the future. These are sort of like process paragraphs. Uh, talk about a rationale. Okay, if these are the things you want to do in the future, okay, rationale. Why do you want to do these? Why do you want to accomplish these things? These things should be reasonable, uh, if it's about your future especially, uh, or give specific results. If it's something about, uh, this is an experience that happened to me in college and this is how I grew from it, this is how I developed leadership skills, be specific have specific evidence, specific results that you can talk about. Give specific results, specific evidence. Don't just say, oh, I developed my leadership skills at this um, student organization. Be specific. What leadership skills did you develop? How did you develop them? Um, give us an example of how you can lead today and how you could lead at this company, like your coworkers. Uh, focus on what would be of value to the company, not just yourself. Uh, and, and it's not like, oh, I want to work for you because, you know, I don't want to starve and be homeless. I want money. No. Focus on what you have that you can bring to the company. These are my leadership skills, which can be helpful in uh, your company as your company deals with, you know, clients from Japan and Thailand and Russia, for example. Focus on what you can contribute to the company. Not just about yourself, but what you can do for the company. Avoid vague statements and cliches. A cliche is like a really vague statement that anyone can say, and something that people often say, something really positive sounding, um, but is really vague. Uh, I'm a people person, I'm outgoing, I'm friendly. Okay, anybody could say that, and lots of people do say that in their job, applica job application materials or in their job interviews. Uh, don't say that unless you can really provide some really interesting specific examples of how you are an outgoing friendly person and how you'll be a friendly person in this job environment. Uh, is, well, my, anyone can say I'm a hard worker. Oh, that might be kind of cliche unless you have really interesting examples uh, that are unique to you, especially in your college experience or reliable, self-driven, uh, dependable, things like that. Um, avoid cliches. If you use something that's kind of fairly common, try to use more specific descriptions and then provide specific interesting examples of how you are this kind of person and, and, and how that would, especially how you would be that kind of person at this company on the job. Avoid vague promises. Uh, I promise I will work hard if you hire me. Okay, uh, companies don't want to hear that. It sounds vague. It sounds like you're, you're begging, please, please hire me. Um, or really vague, meaningless statements, I will add value to your company. That's one of those kind of business cliches, adding value. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. Avoid that. Um, be careful if you're talking about common experiences, generally talking about common experiences that other people have had. Uh, yeah, I went to Japan for a week and it was cool. Okay, um, anyone could probably say that. So avoid common experiences, be unique. Uh, it, it, not, it might be a, an experience that other people have had, but if you're going to use that, if it's really important, if it really is an important experience to you, okay, give us a unique perspective. Um, so what if you spend a month in Japan? Okay, a lot of people have done that, okay, but um, give us a unique perspective on what it did for you, something interesting uh, and specific, um, your travel experiences. Or, okay, for a lot of Korean students struggling with the sunun, the, the college entrance exam and, and uh, or the CSAT or KSAT, the Sunung. Uh, yeah, it's an awful ordeal, an awful difficult experience for a lot of Korean students. Okay, so 
it's kind of a common experience, but it's a real, really difficult experience for a lot of students. Okay, anyone could say though, oh, I studied really hard for three months. Okay, don't just say that. I mean, say something unique that only you could say about your experiences in overcoming the Sunun or you know, the college entrance exam, um, this, this college entrance test. Um, something specific and unique uh, and something for which you can give evidence for. As a result of this, I gained this particular intellectual skills and study skills. Um, that should be something unique to you that you could say that somebody else couldn't say uh, and for which you can maybe give specific evidence, uh, problem-solving abilities, uh, new specific problem-solving abilities uh, or something like that or self-awareness, but something specific. Uh, when it comes to talking about your future goals, uh, your goals will change. Um, our goals always change. That's how life is. Uh, so when you write that, uh, talking about your future goals, understand that your future goals could change. They probably will. That's normal. Uh, and companies hopefully know that. The people looking at your documents hopefully know that. Uh, you should be nonetheless be specific but reasonable. Uh, don't say, oh, I'm planning to get a Nobel Prize. I want to become CEO of the company in about 10 or 20 years. Be reasonable, be realistic, um, don't be too humble, but don't be too uh, arrogant. Uh, should be reasonable, realistic, but specific. Uh, lay out your specific goals and don't say, oh, I want to work here for a year and then quit. Don't say that, they're not going to hire you. Uh, perhaps you will, but have the willingness or a sincere willingness to commit to long term with the company if they're going to hire you. Even if things don't work out, at least have the right heart, the right attitude. And that right attitude, the right heart, also includes having some specific ideas, at least right now in your mind, for the kind of person you want to be in, you know, five or 10 or 20 years, the kinds of things you want to be doing in five, 10 or 20 years, the sorts of things you want to accomplish in five or 10 or 20 years. Even though things won't happen as you expect in life, uh, they're probably looking for a person who is a clear thinker who can at least identify, identify specific, clear, reasonable goals for their future. Uh, so they're looking for the kind of person who can think clearly like that, uh, knowing that your specific goals will change, but it's like the kind of thinker, the kind of person you are. Are you responsible and intelligent and forward-looking and reasonably committed to the company, not just looking out for yourself? Uh, so. Uh, have specific things to say for all of these questions. Um, try to say something that's unique to you, uh, that is not just something anybody else could say, uh, but it's not just about yourself, but it's about the kind of potential employee that you are and what you could possibly contribute to this company or, into the, or to this organization or school or whatever. So those are some things to think about. These are important ways of answering job application questions. And similar things would hold if you're doing this in a cover letter. We might talk about cover letters later after the midterm. In the next video, we'll talk a bit more about uh, proposals and the midterm assignment, which will involve proposals. And this assignment here, this paragraph assignment here, the job application essay, is actually designed to prepare you for the midterm. It seems different, but it's sort of kind of related um, in a way. And you've also got a Google form uh, where you um, should identify what kind of midterm topic you want. Uh, so, I've direct, so that will direct you to my class website, which we haven't used much yet. Uh, and those are the midterm topics, which are first to identify one in, in, in the Google form. So what you see on the website, that is basically uh, the midterm, uh, uh, writing some kind of a project proposal, some kind of a project proposal. That's what you're going to do for the midterm too. And I'll talk about that more in the next couple of videos. In the next video, I'll talk about proposals in general uh, and then about the midterm assignment. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoy your homework and I will see you back here on Wednesday. Goodbye.